What's happening, YouTube? I'm late. I will admit it's not because of Crystal. I was on time this week. Y'all talked about me. He talked about me, and I the, showed up on time. <laughs> the, the Larry fashion of my channel talked about you and black women being late. Because mm -hmm. 95% of the time, y'all is late. Mm -hmm. It ain't the brothers late. Mm -hmm. It's the women. And so the one time that I'm late, I do admit I'm late. There's no excuses. I'm not saying it's raining. I'm not saying I had to fix my hair. I didn't have to put on those broomstick eyelashes. I'm just late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just late. Yeah. Yeah, you know why I'm late. We can get it together when we need to. And you want me to tell y'all why I'm late? Cause she made those sex cookies. Oh, Lamont, stop. Go. Uh huh. Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. What's happening, YouTube? And everybody is watching us. This is going to be our Power Episode Nine review. No, you too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, you just go. Don't just ever. Just don't go ever want to get into a battle with someone go. who got jokes. A comedian, don't mess with them now, cause they will get the last laugh. Like Chris Rock gonna get the last laugh on Will Smith. Mm -hmm. He's just waiting for the highest bidder. He's gonna get him. So how did you guys like this episode nine? And I'll start the questionings by asking my lovely wife, Crystal, how did you like episode nine? I liked it. <laughs> you liked it? Yeah. What did Sorry, you like? I don't about have it? more descriptive words, but I just did, liked it. What did you like about it? I mean, the set is a it's a setup basically for the finale. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of stuff happened in this episode. Uh, I will I will admit I was frustrated most of the episode because they was falling for the okie doke, <laughs> the banana and the tail. Right, part. right. They yeah, <laughs> Daddy Flynn had them falling in line and you know had them hook line and sinker. But uh, yeah, that's what frustrated me. But otherwise, it was a, a decent episode. It was a lot of family drama. It was a good setup for the finale because that's all I really got from this. A lot of setup from the finale. Mm -hmm. The other thing that happened in this episode was you saw a lot of family beefs. You saw Jannard and his brother beefing. Mm -hmm. Tommy beefing with his own family and then meeting a new family member that gets shot. Mm -hmm. And then you had, of course, all the stuff going on with the Flynn family. Right. They could have titled this whole episode Family Beef. Uh-huh. And all these families is about to go to war. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it very, very interesting. And there was a couple of scenes in this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to say it, but there was some soap opera type of scenes in this episode, too. At least two. Mm -hmm. At least two. And we'll talk about them in a few minutes. Shout out to all 89 of y'all that are in here watching us. I will continue to berate and bother my wife at the expense of entertainment and making you guys laugh. Yeah, he to... might be sitting here by himself. Oh, that's fine. I started my channel alone. Uh -huh. I can end this video yep. alone if I have there, to. Yes, you can. But at the end of the day, she still showed up. Whatever. She can say what she wants. She can leave if she wants to. She still mm -hmm. showed up. Okay? So don't let her be up here trying to act like she tough. She still tough. showed Whatever. up. Shout out to Monica, Kim, our last Lucas, we appreciate you guys. We love your energy as well. And we enjoy when you guys come to watch us to put on this entertainment for you guys on Sunday afternoon. We are forever grateful. Shout out to everyone. Honey, I hate to do this to Tommy, but I'm going to have to start this show out with a clip that was very, very soap opery between Tommy and one of his family members. You ready, honey? Go ahead. Take a look. You know the boy that's been shooting up your club? The one with the dreads? Yeah. He got hit, JP. He's bad. Well, you live by the sword, you die by it. He's your son. My son? <clears throat> he had this. How long have you known? I've been known for a minute. I was just waiting for the right time to tell the you. The right time is the motherfucking second you knew. Not after he's fighting for his life. No, I know. And, and I, I ain't got time for this. See my son. Uh... <laughs> when when JP said it, all I could think about was Tyrese when he was wigging out at me. I don't see my son. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, his daughter. Oh, his daughter. Oh, I don't see my child. Uh -huh. My baby. Yeah. It, my baby. My baby. <laughs> my baby. <laughs> But then yeah. he was on Baby Boy saying, I want to see my son. Oh, okay. Remember that? Yeah. Baby, yeah. He was talking, I want to see my son. That's what I, uh -huh. That's all I could think about when JP was saying that. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, that was very soap opera. All I could think about was the music in the background had a, 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 a Young and the Restless vibe. 
the family drama between them two had a young and a restless vibe. But you know what? Because it's Tommy, I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. How about you? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. JP mm-hmm. played his role. He even did. Even though they had the dramatic music playing. Mm-hmm. He, did a good, he did a good job. The score told it all. So, hey, uh, let's get into this with the people. Because I'm sure they got things to do on a Sunday other than listen to us go back and forth and right. listen to my jokes, which my daughter laughs at all my jokes. I don't give a damn if y'all don't laugh. My daughter laughs at all my jokes. Mm-hmm. So that's that's who I'm trying to entertain. Uh-huh. My baby. Okay. My baby. My baby. Take my baby. You ever going to try to take my baby from me? That's our baby. Okay, thank you. That's our baby. <laughs> they start this thing out, honey. Daddy Flynn, who I am now convinced is the puppet master of this whole thing, goes to see his son Vic in the hospital. He's telling Vic that Tommy called a truce with the Serbs. That's why the Serbs attacked you. And he's telling him, look, son, I I know we ain't supposed to like black women, but I would never do something like this to you. I would never put you in danger with a black woman, all for a black woman. Honey, talk to me about Daddy Flynn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean when when those lies was falling off his lips, mm. <laughs> I'm like I mean, like the, 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 the honey, the lies was rolling off his lips like Niagara Falls comes to the earth. Uh, just through uh-huh. just falling. Yeah. I'm sitting here, I know he so basically he he's saying I couldn't stand that you was with a black woman, basically. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna go to war for this woman. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, so a woman that he even even wants sitting at their dinner table, you're not bringing her to dinner. Now, all of a sudden, that she's dead, but his son is okay. Now, all of a sudden, that she's dead, they about to go to war. No, 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 no. He did not like this black woman. And now, like you said, all of a sudden, we're going to go to war to defend the honor of the Flynn's and vindicate this black woman. Right, right. If anything, like, we all know the backstory. He the one who wanted her, who wanted her dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tommy now, tried to warn him. Now he's singing this song like, you know, I would never have wanted this for you, son. You know, me me taking her out is basically destroying you. And yeah, yeah. So I was just watching and and and, and hoping somewhere during this during the show that somebody would you, uh, later would uh, open his eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His eyes gonna be open when them bullets fly right by. Mm-hmm. That's how his eyes gonna be open. They're gonna be open or closed. <laughs> yeah. And Vic basically said to him during this exchange. Tommy warned me. He said that you was trying to do this. Uh-huh. And the daddy was able to put lie on top of lie and shut that down. Mm-hmm. Right. Bruh. Oh, boy. These kids. Lord, I tell you. Then we get to Tommy having an exchange with D-Mac. He likes D-Mac. He knows in this moment D-Mac is his nephew, but D-Mac don't know that he's Uncle Tommy. Mm-hmm. He's basically telling him he wants him to lay low and dream because he's still young enough to attain other things he can dream. Right. And he basically alluded to he tried to help another young man that was family member that's dead to him now. I think okay. he was talking about Tariq. Uh-huh. What do you think when he was giving D-Mac this exchange? Was he talking about Tariq? I thought he was most sort of alluding to ghosts. No? Could be ghosts. Could okay. be either one of them. Because right. when he left Tariq, he said, this is over. Right. So Tariq is basically dead to him. Uh, but I don't think he looked at Tariq as being a genius or, you know, being this this real smart guy. I think he looked at Tariq like that because Tariq was extremely book smart. D-Mac yeah. is number well, smart. I well, I thought he was referring to ghosts. Uh, looking at him as like a young ghost. Okay. Post your comments. Tariq, ghost, or is he talking about both? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this just brings to light what a lot of young kids uh, deal with when all they know is their immediate environment. So mm-hmm. you have this young boy who has all of this potential to, you know, be something, you know, big and make a huge difference and live a great life, but he's stuck within the walls of his community and don't see anything else. Okay. And he asks me, well, what else can I do? Okay. Yeah. So Tommy, you know, sees the potential and I think he's going to try to, you know, as best he can help him get out of this life eventually. The fans have spoken. Everybody agrees that he was talking about ghosts. Uh-huh. Ghosts is who he was talking about. And I can get with that. He's talking about one of them, too. Uh So I can roll with the fact that he's talking about ghosts. So then we get to this scene right here. This is the daddy from um, The Shy. We got two characters up here that played in The Shy. This was Sonny, the guy that had the restaurant. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's the daddy. And he's talking to JP. JP let him know he called Kate. (laughs) 
And Kate basically said nothing. And JP right. was like, the daddy was like, well, it could have went that way or it could have went the other way. Right. What did you expect? Right. And of course, JP is expecting, I missed you my whole life. I can't wait to see you. Mm -hmm. Kate gave him the dial tone. Yeah. Are we going to see Kate this this season, honey? I still think so. I don't think they kept her around just for that conversation. Now, you know what would have got him there? What would have got, got him there? All you had to do was say, yeah, me and Tommy linked up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was just reaching out to you. When she heard Tommy was there, I bet you she would have been there like Johnny on the spot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, post your comments if we're going to see Kate. Um, the way Tommy went off. And the, yeah, yeah. The yeah. way he flipped out, I'm like, well, goodness, what the <laughs> you? Why are you scared of Kate, or are you scared mm -hmm. of what you are when you're with Kate? Right. What happens yeah. when he becomes Kate? Uh -huh. But um, I do believe that at some point in time, Kate is going to have a reunion with JP and the daddy because the daddy might decide he wants to smash some Kate oh, some goodness, more. No. What? Why not? What? No. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know, that's you ain't. Need, all you got to do is take Kate Egan to McDonald's and you get the draws. Mm -hmm. And the daddy might decide. He hey, looked like he's evolved since his teenage years and uh I, I don't think so yeah i don't think so okay let's go <laughs> yeah, hey. my wife said he's evolved he has no he has no feelings when it comes to the urges of what's below his waistline okay all right we'll see moving right along oh man lily the show stealer for this season is talking about daddy flynn and they are going to, she's going to be selling her product close to where they're distributing his coat. Right. And this was a touchy moment because Tommy even asked her, you want me to come with you? She's right. like, oh, uh -huh. can we hug now? Uh -huh. It was just like, no, nah, I can handle this on my own. She's right. a ride or die, honey. Right. How are you liking Lily this season? I love Lily. Yeah, Lily, Lily is great. <laughs> Lily is that girl. She brings the comedic tone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like she, she embodies a strong, independent woman. Exactly. Can you say that? Exactly. She's tough. She don't need no man to go on a stage and slap another man because she can slap the taste out the man's mouth. She rolls on her own. She's making her own money. A man is a compliment. Mm -hmm. And she brings that softness to a man who's thinking irrationally. Right. She's doing all that. Uh -huh. Good job, stars. Very good job on displaying Lily. Oh, Lord. Then we get Claude. Lord have mercy. This chick here. So Claude has got her little distros out here on the streets, distributing mm. the drug. Mm. And of course, she done killed her last girlfriend, Paulina Wynn. I interviewed her. Link's in the description. So now she's feeling happy. She's getting the money. The girl comes in the car. She starts to kiss the girl, her little distro. Mm -hmm. She got the distro thinking, oh, you like how I move? She's like, yeah. She gets the call from daddy about Vic. Then she just turns, flip, she flips script on, on the distro. Mm -hmm. The way y'all used to say only men do this. That's what she just did. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about Claude. You actually said you like Claude this episode. Mm, not really. Claude got on my nerves this episode. <laughs> but <laughs> I was, I was when, when she didn't do what I wanted her to do, that's when she got on my nerves. So I, I kicked her. What? Yeah, no, thank what? you. Yeah. So you 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 didn't care about Claude kicking out the no. That didn't have no bearing on you. It didn't. No. It didn't bother you that she just toyed with somebody's emotion. No, not at all. <laughs> See, That's what she does. Mm -mm, mm -mm, yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. So yeah, she had she went running home to daddy because daddy said come home. Something happened. It's your brother. And she went home to Vic. I mean, she went home to Daddy Flynn, and Daddy Flynn's letting her know what happened to Vic, and he's telling her we need to be a unit, and I need you to work to get the brother back in the team. And what did she do the rest of the episode? Fell in line. Fell in line. Uh -huh. yeah, right. She fell right to hell in line. And then she she goes and meets the brother. Yeah. Now, this exchange was interesting because to this point, Claude is still kind of defending Tommy. Right. Vic even admitted that he came to me and told me that dad was coming after us. I was going to leave town. I just didn't take his car. Yeah, because I don't trust him. And yeah. she said, and you got hit right right <laughs> right which which should be information for both of them right like, yeah. like i mean Claude was she was definitely skeptical initially right. mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i don't like how she was dodging tiny phone calls but something did happen in the middle of that whatever of the episode mm -hmm. that you can see okay well i kind of see why she took the bait yeah yeah but that was mm -hmm. after they forced tommy not you know now see they forced his hand basically the the thing with daddy flynn these are his kids so he knows how to pull their string. Right. He knows how to dangle that carrot in front of the rabbit. 
And in this episode, every carrot he had to dangle, he put it in their face and he let them get a bite of that carrot. Right. That's what and then and isolating them because he told mm-hmm. her, I don't want you to let your brother around Tommy. Because right. he know once he can talk to Tommy, Tommy is going to let him know what the deal is. Right, right. Which is just more info that this was all orchestrated by the daddy. Mm-hmm. Some people were saying, why would the daddy risk allowing his son to get killed? And I said, daddy don't care. That, 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 daddy didn't care. I think you said that. When that was in some of the other shootout scenes. Yeah, but I guess yeah. with this episode, I mean, the circumstance, he was leaving town. Right. He was running off from the daddy. Right. So if he got shot, I mean, he was leaving the daddy anyway. So I can kind of see that. But they did say most of the gunfire took place on Glow's side of the car, mm. which means who, that, that twin Serbian was really, really trying to concentrate and shooting on Glow's side of the uh, car. So, yeah. you know, that's how they tried to justify that in the story writing then we get to lily lily's game of thrones she got little birds everywhere here and everything chirp 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 chirp. she she's got a little bird named nina that works in the hospital who learns that vic got shot but has no information for tommy on what's going on with glow and tommy he's really worried about the person being with vic well how'd you like this it's time what did you learn from lily lily just got people in these streets lily let, let, let me find out Muchella, whose link is in the description, is one of the birds out there giving information to Lily. Because you know Muchella keep hunting you to the street, too. Uh, so yeah. talk to me about Lily, just showing more of her, her vast expansion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just showing that she's doing her job and she's a valuable team player. Got that right. Lily is nobody to be reckoned with, man. I would not want to be on Lily bad side. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't want to fool with her like that. <laughs> Then, honey, Lord have mercy. This is when the daddy pulls the ultimate string for his daughter. He basically tells the daughter, look, look, honey, all that stuff I was saying about my old traditions of not liking black people, not letting women be at the seat of the table. I'm getting rid of all that just for you. Uh-huh. You're right. Just, just more crooked manipulation. Right. He knows that that's what she wants more than anything at life to be a leader in this organization. He tells her that and tells her, you know, I need your help. They're really in your brother. Mm-hmm. Take it away, honey. They, yeah. And she fell for it. Right. Mm-hmm. He, he, and I think she was still somewhat. This is they left this scene where you're thinking, okay, is she gonna go along with what he says, or is she just telling him what he wanna hear right. until she can figure out what's really going on? And so um yeah. So this is when she started turned in a little bit for me because one she was ignoring tommy's phone calls mm-hmm. she was ghosting tommy the whole episode yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and with all of this stuff going on and you're actually doubtful of what's happening you know don't just listen to your daddy like tommy said consider the source right so now this man is automatically one he's riding for glow he's trying to defend you know the family or whatever mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden he wants you to take a lead role <laughs> Come all of a now. sudden, yeah. So You're not all, thinking about that. So he's manipulating the son by saying, "I'm fine with you having a black boo thing." Uh-huh. Now he's manipulating this is such her. A tragedy. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they uh-huh. and they both falling for it like dudes used to fall for Mike Tyson within a minute in his fights, and uh-huh. you'd be mad as hell at them pay per views. They falling for it. Right. But golly. Right. Mm-hmm. Then he goes in there and talks to Vic, and says, tells Vic. If he would not have left with Glow, mm-hmm. she might would still be here. Right. He should have took that as a punch in the gut. Right. Like, he, he, dude, look at his face. His arm is in a sling. He's got a bullet that went through his shoulder. That's not what you tell your son who you're trying to get to be the leader of everything. If you just... I mean, but if you're trying to manipulate somebody emotionally, basically it's your fault, kind of, because you listen to Tommy, you try to lead a family. Mm-hmm. And I've been telling you all your life mm-hmm. that families stick together. And when you try to run off, this is what happened. Not only you try to run off, you try to run off with a black woman. Right. So you know them black folks, they got but curses. That don't, that don't, that don't matter, matter no more. He don't even care about that no more. <laughs> oh, oh, damn! My no, bad. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. It's that's right. The, uh-huh. the black part ain't an issue no more, y'all. My bad. Right. She's absolutely. <laughs> By the way, your hair looks absolutely nice. Oh, thank your you. Your ear, your hoop earrings, your door knock earrings. Knock, oh, knock. Whatever. They look just absolutely go. gorgeous. Thank I just want to let you know. Uh-huh. You know, I said all that. Say your mind is beautiful. Thank you. When I first seen you, I didn't see your physical appearance. I saw your mind. Uh-huh. Uh, your body yeah. looked like a brain. Uh-huh. A big brain. <laughs> okay. That's what I saw. <laughs> then. The man that I still kind of has a feeling got an insider track. I just I ain't too sure about Paulie, y'all. I still believe Paulie is up to no good. 
He's out here talking to Daddy Flynn. Daddy Flynn is awfully happy that, right. that a son of yours almost died. You awfully happy, which is more indication that Daddy Flynn is in on this whole right. thing. You out here just skipping along. Skipping like, along. Because yeah. his, his plan is coming together. together yeah. <laughs> what did my man from the A-team used to say? I love it when a plan come together. Uh -huh. And Polly's up here telling him, look, man, we don't need to go to war with the Serbs. But uh -huh. in this moment, honey, let me tell you something. Could it be that Daddy Flynn is in with the Serbs and they're going to turn on Tommy? You ever think about that? Mm. Could that be a possibility? Because I would have to have so to think about why that exactly before. could Flynn go to that twin and say, "Shoot up this car"? With the twin just did it for money. What 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 would he have to say to them to be like, "Look, I'm not your enemy." I'm here to help you. I'm going to give you this money. I want you to scare my son and take out the black woman. Uh -huh. You got to think about that. What kind of backdoor things know. they got going on? Right. But anyway, daddy's like, call in the four horsemen. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell. For those of you that's in the religion, y'all know the four horsemen is in the Bible. Honey, when was the first time you heard about four horsemen outside the Bible? Oh, goodness. Well, you talking about your wrestling. wrestling Not stuff. them. Not them. Yes, it is. I'm talking about the four horsemen of Madden. Me, Vic, Julian, and Jared. And then we expanded to me, Vic, Freeman. And then we expanded some more. We was like the Avengers. We was the four horsemen of Madden. If you lived in North Carolina from the era of 2006 to about 2014, we was playing Madden, and you wanted to bet $100 on a Madden game, if you play any of the horsemen, you lost your damn money because we kicked your butt in Madden. You remember that? Remember I won my Mustang in college playing Madden? Mm -hmm, that's what you said. Mm -hmm. Ford Mustang. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, she's from Detroit, so this is going to be a dig at Ford. That car was a piece of crap. Mm -hmm. I ain't keep it long. Okay, you're bad. Mm -hmm. No, I ain't keep it because it was a piece of crap. That was smart. <laughs> then, ladies and gentlemen, Claude ain't the only person ghosting somebody. Right. Kate ghost and JP so bad she just disconnected her damn phone. I'm like, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. They just don't like black people on this show. <laughs> Kate got that call. I'm like, you know he feels so. <laughs> she gets a call that from a black horrible. man. She gets a call from a black man that sounds like Tone Low, and she just disconnect her phone. All right. <laughs> Right. Uh, JP and all this boy wants is a connect. He wants to just have a conversation. Now, where did he mom. get her number from? Tommy, I believe. I'm sure Tommy wouldn't have gave him the number. I think he got it from Tommy. I think he got it from uh, Tommy. I can't episode. remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I felt so bad for him in that moment. I'm like, <laughs> and it, I mean, maybe it's sinking in that Tommy was telling him a little bit of the truth. Like, you need to leave her alone. I doubt it, but we'll see yeah. what we'll but see. All where he it had goes. to say was time with Tommy. And yeah. But he didn't. Right. He didn't. Uh -huh. He didn't. All right. So then JP and Tommy are having a good discussion. It's payday. I don't know how much money Tommy gave them, but basically it had to be more than 10 G's because he told them, do, do not spend 10 G's in one place, blah, blah, blah. And JP decides, look, man, this money is so good and so fast, bro. I want to keep this job after I get my debts paid. Uh -huh. Tommy's like, nope. And right. can you blame Tommy? I mean, because he know the longer you stay in that bit in that business or whatever, mm -hmm. that eventually your time is going to come, like you said in the episode. Right. So he doesn't want anything to happen to him. So basically, get in, make your money, make the money that you need, and mm -hmm. then get back out. Don't stay too long. Right. Make the money. Don't let the money make you. But what's Tommy's plan of of uh, evacuation? I mean, that's his life. That's so so Tommy just you said Tommy just willing to die. He's I mean, gonna, Tommy, yeah, apparently. I mean, that was his whole issue with ghosts in power. Like, he didn't want to get that. That was all he knew. And so now he's finally leading his own organization, crime organization. This mm -hmm. is he living a life right now. Oh, JP got the phone number because um, Kate was the emergency contact for Miriam. Okay. She was the emergency contact. Okay. Then in the next scene. Wait, one thing that stood out. Oh, go ahead. That doctor, the sister girl, looked very comfortable collecting her money. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, okay, she is. She have an exit plan. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> post your comments on the sister girl, the doctor that doctor. all the black women was caking up for. Y'all yeah. didn't want her to die. But she was a she, part. Yeah. She, she looked like she enjoying all this she money. She pocketed coming. that money, saying they little folks. Well, why, why shouldn't she, honey? Because the FDA rejected her drug. Right. 
So now she's like, F you, FDA. If you ain't going to give me what I want, I'm going to take it. Uh -huh. I'm going to take what's mine. Uh -huh. I'm going to take it. Time to give her so stacks of swing. So she like go on sabbatical or she left work for a little bit because she spent a day in and a day out in that In that, that lab. lab. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something that happens to young men, especially teenagers, all across the world. It even happens to grown men. Unlike women, men can have a knockdown, drag out fight with each other, fisticuffs, and can wind up becoming friends. Women don't do that. Here you got Marshall, who has been cut from the CBI. Just cut. Just gave him the scissors. Mm -hmm. Cut the umbilical cord. He's done. And then push, aim the gun at him. Aim a gun at him now. Yeah. And he wants D-Mac to be his friend again because he's alone. He's mm -hmm. out here by himself. Right. D-Mac pretends in the beginning like he's not going to do it, only to take him back. Wow. Honey, talk about that because you ain't like it. I'm, I didn't. I'm like, he just basically didn't care if you sunk or swim, threw you to the wolves, and now that his whatever he had going on ain't working, he coming crawling back. No, thank you. You can't trust him. <laughs> no, and he's simple. He's he's like a silly acting young one. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, how many how many teenagers you know behave like are yeah. simple and silly? That's that's like eighty five percent yeah. of teenagers. He's just like so immature with it. I, ladies and gentlemen, I don't trust him either. Oh, I don't goodness. trust him. If he tried to snake you like that one time. What do you think is going to happen when he has more resources or more access yeah. to resources or he thinks he's got a better plan? Right. This one incident of you saving his life is not going to make him feel any better. He's going to be more emboldened yeah. that he can take the con over you again. Then D-Mac actually said, I love you, bro. Right. And then started just what running off at the mouth. I'm sure he told them everything about Tommy. Everything. And I was nervous for him because I'm thinking, okay, now D-Mac can take this information. Is it might not be Mac the other one? Marshall. Marshall could take this information and then use that as a way to get back in good with uh absolutely with CBI. Absolutely. So now he's a man coming back. Absolutely. Yeah. So. And all the stuff Tommy well, let me all the stuff Tommy eventually says to D Mac later on, even though D Mac ain't do nothing, we have no idea what the hell Marshall out here running his mouth doing. Right. Everything Tommy got on D Mac about probably what Marshall is doing. Mm -hmm. And Marshall, we have no idea what his real motives are. This boy probably just right. want to get back in with CBI because that's the devil he knows. And he's probably going to do whatever he can to get in there. For all we know, he's the one that let Jannard know where Tommy and D-Mac was going to be, where D-Mac keep his little stash from his picture and his daddy when they got shot up in the end. Mm -hmm. For all we know, that's who sent him there. For all we know. Yeah. We'll see. Then we get to this, honey. This is when Tommy was mad as hell. Yeah, well, and Tommy was about to tell him about D Mac. He was about to tell him about D Mac he right here. First. He let him go first, and he went off on him about Kate. And we've got the clip for your guys' entertainment purposes. I called Kate. What? Did you tell her where I am? No. What the fuck did you tell her? Nothing. I just didn't want her to find out about Miriam from anybody but me. I actually had to do one motherfucking thing for me. One! I know. No, you don't. Otherwise, you wouldn't have opened up this fucking box. You don't know what the fuck you just did. I did what I thought was right. You did what you thought was right for you. <laughs> Kate must be a devil in a skirt. Right. The, the way Tommy got fired up about her, she must... What, ladies and gentlemen, post your comments here. Why is Tommy so afraid for Kate to catch up with him in Chicago? What you think, honey? I mean, because Tommy, he like self-destructs when he's around Kate. Mm -hmm. He's like a huge mama's boy. I mean, maybe it's just because he know that she can pull his strings and, and have him wigging out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so Tommy is unstable when Kate is around. Um and I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm scared for both of them <laughs> if they meet up again. Well, can you imagine if he's spazzing out just by the idea that she got caught? What he'll do when he actually see her? Mm -hmm. Tommy's dead to New York. Mm -hmm. Tommy's supposed to be a ghost right now, right? And he's he can't be a ghost if Kate Egan pops up uh -huh. and starts intertwining in his life. That's does she some, think he did? You, have to, does, you think she? Does she think he's dead? You remember he he, in he that, crashed that, in that, that car. He crashed in her car. Oh, yeah. Car blew up. So he's a ghost. Right. He's a ghost to everybody. He's not alive. Yeah. And if she and you know she can't keep her mouth closed. 
Lord, don't let her get some good of that white my powder in her. Time. Yeah, my son, my son. This, that, and the third. Right. She's coming okay. back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I, I can see now. I forgot mm -hmm. about that piece. Yeah, where, she's coming yeah, back. Now that, yeah. Because mm -hmm. she can mess up the whole, the whole, this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. boy. Post your comments, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, we've got 300 in the building. Can we get 300 likes? All it takes is a quick second to smash that like button so that people know that we are one of the best couples on YouTube to ever do this thing and give reviews. <laughs> We're a good tandem when we decide to come together. He's so humble, isn't he? So humble. Like like y'all like humble. I don't want to hear <laughs> that. Shit. I, boy, don't, don't, don't you even go there with me. Whatever. If they like humble, why so many people voted for Donald Trump? Not only is he faking being humble, but he's lying about the things he's bragging about. Is he faking being humble? He's faking it. No. He's, the things that he claimed he has, he don't have it. So that's a fake. No, but the humbleness comes from, the non-humbleness comes from him claiming credit for everything. I give everything you that. good is mad. I, I, I give you that. Yeah. But none of that stuff that he's talking about is good is his, so it's fake. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. It's fake humble. You can't be talking about you the man and you're not. You know, in order to be the man, you got to beat the man. And honey, who's the yeah. man? <laughs> Go. <laughs> Let's talk about the white man. Lord have mercy, honey. I gave a dissertation last week, ladies and gentlemen. Let me let me let me let y'all see my face. We talking about people that want to put extort you. Anytime someone wants to extort you, give up and jump on the sword because there is going to be no end to how long they're going to try to placate you to do the bidding that they want you to do. I've been told them last week, Bennigan's Island, and I call him that because he's starting to get that LeBron James thing on the top of his head. I said Bennigan's Island either need to get Diamond to take out white privilege for him or he need to take him out himself. Mm -hmm. White privilege runs up on him and says, honey, oh, Seamus, I need me 50 Gs by Friday. Mm -hmm. Nigga, what for another another, another you, yacht or whatever no, he, he was saying? He he, he probably spent the other money on some French woman already. That's like I need me another bag if you want to get enough sniff of this. Mm -hmm. So, honey, just tell the people what they need to know about this dude mm -hmm. about white privilege. Whatever he it, yeah, I'm waiting for him to get his. That's all I can say. Just waiting on him to get his, and I'm and I'm I don't see Seamus necessarily. I, I hope Seamus. I'm not confident in his ability to do it for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think his time is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shame is going to get it. White privilege is going to get you it. Know, I'm talking about white privilege. I'm oh, hoping white. that Seamus is the one who does it, even though my confidence in him isn't all that high. I got more jokes on Seamus later in this uh, later in this review, but I don't have no faith in Seamus being tough as nails mm -hmm. to do anything to white privilege. I mean, but you're back against the wall and you got to help your sister. He threatening that the sister gone, ain't going to last long if she don't got money. Maybe if his back is against the wall. And we just waiting on him to wise up and do what he needs to do to the cop. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That right. This, Hopefully it don't the, take too long. The fact that he's not doing it now tells you how wise he right. is. Right. It, it shouldn't have to be that this man done came to you early talking about I need 50 more G's. For, nigga, mm -hmm. for what? Right. You're going to the strip club? I, I'm, I'm not providing you these funds, mm -hmm. bro. No, tell. Right. Either tell on me or you about to be threatened. Mm -hmm. You know, that coffee he was drinking, all he got to do is slip a little something something in that coffee. That's all you got to do. Some rat poison. That's what they used to do back in the old school day. Oh, goodness. My grandma and them day, they slipped rat poison in your coffee. Oh, goodness. Right. Let's go. <laughs> Next. Right. Okay. The Four Horsemen of Ireland. Um, and one of them just happens to be the boxer that just got beat by Floyd Mayweather. They show up to meet Paul. Uh -huh. What you think about the Four Horsemen of Ireland? Who, one of them is the boxer for real? No, honey, I'm playing. No, oh, that, no, okay. no, no, that's not Conor McGregor. Okay. They just talk like him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the way they walk in, they don't look all that tough, but they the serious looks on their face, I guess, tell you that they got... Wait behind them. I said I was like the one, the redhead one. He don't look tough at all, but uh, I mean, hey. Yeah, there's it, an it, older crowd, yeah. and but they tell you they got probably got a lot of relationships, got a lot of experience. They come in looking like they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I they, mean, we've seen armies and stuff roll in on power, and they flop before. So yeah, who knows what they are, what they're like. Good point. That's what I was gonna say. We've seen these tough looking armies that get their ass beat. Uh huh. Now I do want to point out that oh, Holly. Boy. Go ahead. I think Paulie is still like the wild card for me. 100%. So he's not in on what Flynn is doing. 
Mm-hmm. He's just kind of learning some information, trying to give Flynn advice, kind of like, you know, you, you, what you're doing, I don't really agree with it, don't make sense. I think Polly is the only person who I think can help turn this around and hopefully <clears throat> tell Flynn's kids what's really going on. He might be that guy. Yeah. Because Polly seemed like he liked Tommy a little bit in the beginning. He mm-hmm. he had a certain level of respect for Tommy. He wants to go on a date with Lily. Mm-hmm. We might have to wind up selling Lily to talk to Polly, call yeah. the truth, something yeah. like that. I mean, so Tommy, I mean, Polly goes by a code. Yeah. And yeah. there's a chance that Flynn is doing something that goes against whatever code that he he has and supersedes his loyalty to Flynn. So I think Polly might be the the one to save things, hopefully, mm-hmm. but right. we'll see. Shout out to Miss Classic, who didn't give me a chance to say this, but I'm glad she mentioned it. Did y'all hear the Ireland rappers in the background? That was Conor it. McGregor. Okay. So during this scene, it was some Irish rappers, and that was that was the Irish rapping group that was founded, funded by Conor McGregor. Okay. That's for real. Okay. And so she just wanted to let y'all know that she liked them tunes, and she downloaded it from iTunes. She's going to be working out to this music tomorrow. Shout out to Miss Classic because you're going to be the only one working out to that shit. <laughs> I didn't hear it. I have to go back and listen to it. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Miss Classic. <laughs> then, honey, we get on to, oh, Lord, Junkie Jannard is in here talking to Black about Tommy pushing the dolly. And I know all my Black sisters out here is mad with Junkie Jannard because y'all just want him to get it together. But he's not. He's not going to get it together. And while he's down there telling Black that they're going to take out Tommy and he's really the true leader of CBI, look who's listening to everything. Right, right. Talk about it, honey. Diamond feelings got to be hurt. Because right. that boy done said, I let him win. Right. I let him get back and lead. I'm playing the long game. Yeah. And I'm like, you dumbass, you playing the long game. Why is you having this conversation talking so loud with the door open, junkie? Right. Bruh. Right. I mean, but that's just kind of like in his nature. He always messing up and stumbling, which tells you that he shouldn't be the leader of anything. Nope. And I'm glad that Diamond got the chance to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but we'll see how he <laughs> plays his hand. Um, he yeah, play, well, yeah. he played the hand very calm because they came upstairs. Diamond pretend like everything was cool, everything's right. hunky dory. Like he ain't no, like he down ain't no there. nothing, right? right. And mm-hmm. so he, they, they, they bought it. Oh, die, he's not in on us. He don't, he, he didn't catch us. Yeah, but that's something that Jannard would do: slip up and and, and he revealed the whole master whole plan, the thing. whole master plan. <laughs> and this, this y'all king, Jannard, Junkie Jannard. Some of y'all was caking up for junk. This y'all king? Oh, good. Like, the, the ones of y'all that were caking up for him is the same ones who leave comments in my comment section that act and behave like Marshall do. That's why he's y'all king. Because y'all follow and behave like Marshall. So this y'all king? He, this y'all king? Bruh. Now, the, the wild card is, is Black going to stay true to Jannard? Uh-huh. Or is he going to wind up saying, no, nah, I can't fool with this guy. I'm going I'm to tell Diamond everything. Right. That's yeah, what, and I don't know. I don't. I haven't gotten a good feel for his character and where his voice he's lying. Now, did he know both Jannard and Diamond back in the day, or is he just Jannard's? If he's just Jannard's guy, then I don't see him him flipping. But if he knew both both of them, I wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised if he tried to flip. You know, okay. Flip. Okay. You make great points. Then we get to this. After a full day of ghosting Tommy, he finally is able to catch up with Claude. Claude lets him know. The one thing he's been trying to get information on the whole day. He lets Claude know, look, I'm not the one you need to be worried about. I didn't do this. Mm -hmm. Who's telling you this information? That's who you need to worry about. Uh She would never let him know. Right. Even though Tommy knows it's the daddy. Mm -hmm. And Claude revealed that Glow is gone. Mm -hmm. Tommy is not happy. Talk talk to her. Talk to us, Andy. I mean, just his, I guess, reaction should have told her everything that she needed to know, that Tommy wouldn't have did anything. He was basically trying to protect both of them. Mm-hmm. And like she said, he had so many opportunities to get her brother. Why do it in that fashion? Right. Um, right. I mean, he knows that she. he was telling the brother to the club, watching him sit. You know, mm-hmm. like, it, Yeah. So it, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, she just, she's just... 
<sighs> she don't want to see the truth. You can't right. handle the truth, basically. <laughs> Can you give it a little bit more enthusiasm uh, than that? You can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. How about that? Do I need to go call my I'm daughter? Not an actor. Do just I need go. do I need to go no. call my actress no. daughter in here who can I say that? Y'all. Oh, okay. No, yeah, oh, okay. Go. Lord, but then we get back to Bennegan's Island. This dude right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. I got to say this. Him popping diamond in the eyeball, that was a bitch move. I mean, look, bro. That, that was the behavior of someone, a short man who has a short man complex. He's trying to prove that, it, yeah. Why, what, what was the point? That looked so weak. <laughs> it was so funny. It, it was funny. It, it, it looked so weak. You popping this dude in the eyeball. And he came out of what? nowhere. And then his hand was... <laughs> You saw the, it's like his hand was reaching up. Yeah. How you, <laughs> like you're pulling the string uh, down to stop a, a public bus. Uh, that yeah. that was hand, so weak. It and, was funny. It was funny just because it looked weak. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes in there and he's telling Diamond, I need XYZ money. Diamond it reminds him again, bro, what you're doing is just as crooked as what I did. Right. And you're a police officer. Do you really have to pull the gun outside the door like that? <laughs> like, could you just walk up in there? What you doing? Diamond is still trying to reform this dude. He right. gave him an extra 50 G. And making the guy, like you said, making the guy realize that we one in the same. Mm -hmm. We act all high and mighty if you want to, but we doing the exact same thing. Yep. Same thing. And eventually, if he don't wise up, Diamond might wind up handling this business for him. I still think somehow, some way, Diamond gonna handle this business that and, makes sense. and then be like, you know what? The Back guilt, me. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I That's, can see that. That's a right. good point. And then uh, after that, we get Tommy showing up to the restaurant where Diamond was sitting in there talking to um, Atlantic Star, excuse me, not Atlantic Star, Secret Lover. Who's, who reveals she loves she's she loves Diamond and that's an ethical problem for her. Tommy asked Diamond, "Look, I need bullets. I need soldiers." Diamond's like, "I ain't going back to jail." Right? Can you blame him? Nope, not at all. I blame him. I Tommy don't. looked out for this dude. Mm -hmm. You need to look back out. And I mean, just... but and then what? Ar what army does he have? Good point. He don't have an army. Good point. Because his brothers and them ain't with him. Right? Yeah. So he, I can't help you. Right. And, and maybe that's what he should have said. It's like, Tom, I can't hear because I ain't got no arm. Right. I mean, but he did kind of say that. He said, you know, he said that. Mm -hmm. We don't have, I don't have the men or whatever to right. help you either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Boy, boy, boy. Well, he, he got this thing right here. Mm -hmm. Atlantic star secret lover. Mm -hmm. Hair do big hair. That's her real hair, ladies and gentlemen. That's not a wig. That's her real hair. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, look at Joy. Oh, stop. This real too. Stop. Uh huh. How long did it take you That's to do this? That's a compliment. This? I mean, to say that you got so much hair, it looked like a wig. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with that. I'm 100% with that. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we get the Mucinex. He's smiling all hard because Tommy's bringing him information. Tommy wants to pay money to get soldiers. Then he's like, well, who's coming for me? Tommy makes him pay for that. He says Walter Flynn, and then he was Tommy asked him for another favor. He didn't want to do it, but he did, he did it anyway. Tommy takes out the twin, and as he takes out the twin, Tommy's talking crap. I enjoy shooting your brother, and I knew I was going to get your ass. That caught day. me off guard. But, I'm just like, you just going to let your guy get shot like that? What choice did he have? Tommy paying for it. it oh, good. So they just for hire. If a stripper can do a pole dance for $10, you think he gonna turn down a half a million to take out a body? So your, I mean, take out one of his guys. Yeah, take out one of his guys. Yeah, and I mean, so your question earlier about how Flynn got the Serbs to do with his bidding right. is that they're money they're there for hire. Yeah, that, that's what I said. Uh -huh. That's what I said. That's what, yeah. that's, that's what your boy been saying. You know what I'm saying? Hey, million dollar man WWE taught us best, honey. Everybody has a price. Mm. What's your price? Obviously, price. yes, you do. Yes, you, well, how much your I life insurance for? I don't have a price. How much just you, my, you know, okay? Just go. Yeah, your life insurance says you have, have a price. price. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. That's they do. Uh -huh. They said exactly, that. I don't, I don't and that's what price. that's what matters. But anyway, Tommy was able to take this dude out for a half a million dollars mm -hmm. after coming there saying he need an army. Mm -hmm. So Merkovich must gonna make a call to the Serbian national lands, like. Like your boy did in Ireland. He's gonna make that phone call. He's gonna get everybody to come over here and help out Tommy. Mm -hmm. But honey, I just got this feeling there's about to be dissension in the rank. Somehow, some way, everybody's gonna turn and it's gonna all be on Tommy. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to get on with Orbit Eyes. So DMAC and Marshall, you see you got one on the left and you got one on the right. Never make a deal with a man who can see both of them as they stand to the left and the right. Orbit eyes. You don't make no deals with a dude like that. And I'm like, ain't this his cousin? I'm like, okay, do you not re recognize your cousin? <laughs> they, yeah, they said, yeah. Anyway, so he pulled a gun out on his cousin. I guess he really is kind of crazy, like and, they said. And I, I couldn't figure. He pulled the gun out. His eyeball looking this his way. His gun was his gun was this way, but the eyeball looking that way. It was like the gun this way, eyeball that way. Anyway, he basically is gonna listen to these dudes. D Mac brought Dahlia. We don't know how he got the Dahlia. He snuck the Dahlia somehow, some way to show to these guys. Look, I can get you the product. I can even let you get a meeting with the Connect. And old Orba eyes start smiling and said, "If you can't do it, you're gonna die. How's this gonna end, honey?" I mean, so it shows you that you got another crew that's going to be on D Max back and yep. another younger boy. I mean, yep. the other boy. I think at, towards the end of this, D Mac realized, I would hope that he was a little bit in over his head because he mm -hmm. didn't expect that encounter to go the way that it did. Right. Um, yeah. So it just is setting up another conflict that we, it's probably going to come back later. Ladies and gentlemen, again, never go into any deal. When it's two of y'all and y'all standing side by side, left from right, and the person you're making a deal with can take his eyeballs and individually look at y'all with each single eye, that's nobody you make a deal I mean, with. And then you got a guy who don't recognize that's his cousin. <laughs> On top of all of that, yes, you got that going too. Now, honey, you know this made me mad. So this is when the Flynn family unites. The dad gives a speech. This about is after Claudia went and saw, saw Tommy with the Serbs, right? So now she's in, she's in with the daddy, she believes in the all the crap the daddy's saying, and and, <laughs> and the daddy is playing these kids like a French fiddle. And after he realizes that he's got them both hooked, he's got them both hooked, mm -hmm. he decides to give them this speech about the most important thing a man can have his real riches is his children. I'm about to throw up. Like I get sick of these dudes who's doing things in immor immorality, robbing, looting, stealing, killing, polluting. All of a sudden, the greatest conquest of your life, the most important thing in your damn life, their children is are, your chil their children. Their children are stop up it. Here on the pedestal. Stop it. No, it's not. To stop get everybody it. Everybody else. Stop kids. it. Stop it. You won't think about your kids and you putting them in danger doing this job. You ain't thinking about your kids when you out here lying to them about you basically almost killing one of your kids to try to reel them back in. So just stop this SHIT, okay? Stop it. But y'all y'all privileged, you know what's always pull this stunt to make people think that y'all are holier than thou and it eases your conscience. I don't I get sick of it. So what'd you think about it, honey? A lot. <laughs> Go ahead. Um first, what was Claudia doing? The way she was lurking up the Tommy car, I'm like, what is, was she about to put something on the car? Or what was she doing? When she was running up the Tommy car? Yeah. Maybe she was going to talk to Tommy. I mean, you could call him on the phone. No. She was like sneaking up. I, it looked kind of suspicious to me. I, I agree. I thought I she agree. was about to try to stick something on it to blow it up. I don't mm -hmm. know. But then she saw him talking to the Serbs, which is something that she created because he didn't he doesn't have anybody to turn to but the serves right <laughs> right so right. i mean you ghosting me your family is after me you mm -hmm. drinking the kool-aid and yeah. so i have to go make get some type of alliance going on he's got to serve up for hire yeah um the other thing is when they revealed the information to daddy flynn mm -hmm. about you know i saw tommy with the serves mm -hmm. and uh he looked kind of surprised <laughs> uh -huh. like that's news to me he also he did. looked shocked that he... she was just now so convinced yep. that family is everything and mm -hmm. I'm never going to stray from you again in my life daddy <laughs> but yeah he had this shock look on his face like oh you saw Tommy with the serve mm -hmm. yeah and they look goofy up there with them, with them showing all three of them. Look at them. Like they, this dynasty about to go to <laughs> no they all look goofy and then was toasting this looked like have any of y'all ever watched Young and the Rest? My grandma used to watch that when I was a kid. This looked like Victor Newman and his two children. He had a son and a daughter. This is exactly what this little reunion looked like. Victor Newman and his kids about to get their hind parts beat. Mm -hmm. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Toasting and glassing. Yeah. We're family I, now. The whole time I'm thinking, and I used to like y'all. 
I used to. It is like hopefully they come to their senses they before won't. they get taken out. Because this is a setup. You basically he's setting his whole family up yep. to be taken out yep. if they don't wise up. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. And because I used to like them, I hope they they come to the light before it's too late. Well, they better find Vic Flynn a new chocolate girl because. Once you go black, you never go He ain't black. getting over that girl that quick. No, no. Well, you're going to have uh, to do something because mm -hmm. if, well, he about to put the family in major danger. Mm -hmm. It's about to be over and with. Like I said, I think Polly is the only one who can pull their coattail. I, I got think you. think he's the only one who can maybe get them to see the light. Mm -hmm. I got you. By Meaning the way, Polly might get taken out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He could. I hope not, though. Uh -huh. We've got 425 in the building. Let us get 425 likes so more people can come and watch me when I do these reviews with my wife. These are some of my most important and favorite times. Mm -hmm. We're only going to hold y'all for about four more minutes because then it's on with our daughter. Oh, boy. So Tommy meets up with DMAT. DMAT reveals that he ran his stupid mouth and told somebody in Indiana about the, the Dahlia. And then Tommy reveals, I'm your uncle. D-Mac says, I'm never going to call you uncle. Tommy realizes D-Mac is not a killer because he ain't never shot nobody. He, would, he wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. Mm -hmm. And from there, they start. They decide they're going to tell the daddy, right? Uh -huh. Now, in between all that, Jannard learns that um, D Mac and Marshall have double crossed him, mm -hmm. went to Indiana trying to make a connect, and they decide they're going to kill them two little N words. Which is ridiculous. That sounds like a Jannard movie. That sounds like a Marshall movie. That just, sounds like a young, right, inexperienced, right. dumb movie. Just go get the drugs and leave the two kids alone. That's right. what they're going to do to you. And so maybe D Mac told Jannard where Tommy, where D, where D Mac likes to keep his stash. So at. you think there's a split there? Could be, because uh -huh. I don't trust Marshall. Because they're supposed to be after both of them. Right, right. So maybe Marshall, like you said, could have flipped. I'm out. trying to tell you, I don't believe Marshall. Anyway, Jannard hitters come and run up on Tommy and D Mac at D Mac's little drop spot. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got another case of the black hitters that can't shoot worth a damn. Okay. Tommy is in the center of all this shooting. D-Mac is pushed to the side by the car. How in the hell did you spray all them bullets? You missed Tommy, but you get D-Mac right in the gut. Uh -huh. Please explain. Can, can we get a black show where the black hitters can actually shoot? Okay? Every show, they miss what they're supposed to be shooting at and hit something that's insignificant. This case, honey, they hit D-Mac. Yeah. Talk about this, I mean, honey. you saw it coming. When they saw it, when they showed Tommy and D-Mac walking together, I'm like, oh, here we go. Something going to happen on the walk. Yep. Um, yeah, I saw it coming. You know it wasn't going to end happy. Something no, was about to no. happen. <laughs> I thought I wasn't good. I thought he said he wasn't going to never call him Uncle Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> but when your life on the line, you will say a whole lot of stuff you ain't uh, never think you would say. Uncle uh, all of a sudden, he was Uncle Tommy, Daddy, Daddy Mac. Uncle, Daddy, Pastor, <laughs> yep, everything. Yep. <laughs> and then, ladies and gentlemen, we got to the soap opera drama where Tommy revealed that D-Mac is his son. He's known it for a long time. He's in the hospital. JP is upset. He goes in there. He says, I got to see my son. He went, right. he went baby boy, Tyree. I need to see my son. Uh -huh. Let me see my son. Right. How did you like this soap opera acting right, right here? I mean, honey? I like the way everything is, was revealed, but I agree with him that Tommy should have told him as soon as he found out, mm -hmm. waiting on the right moment. I mean, there is no right moment. Just tell me. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So I have no, no issues with how this, this played out. And then they end by crowning Vic and crowning Claude. Dad lets the four horsemen know that my two kids is at the head of this operation. The brains of the operation is Claudia, and Vic is the leader. And the, the horseman from Ireland is just like, when does Claude get to sit with men? Right. And the daddy got to let them know, hey, she's sitting with them. And these are your four horsemen of the apocalypse of death from Ireland. Honey, how many of these horsemen going to die? Because some of these horsemen going to die, if not all of them. Not the horsemen, then some of the, the, the Flynn family as well. Who going to die in the Flynn family? I have to think about that. I'm not yeah. ready to, to you, stake a claim yeah. yet. Mm, me, neither. me yeah. neither. I mean, I don't know. I'm hoping they, again, see the light. So I ho I'm hoping they turn it around. If anybody, Polly, for some reason, I'm thinking Polly might be, be the one. <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude our review for tonight. 
I will be dropping my trailer breakdown for episode 10 tomorrow. I will be back Monday and Tuesday night, 9 p.m. live with a group talking about power each episode. I have Moochie and Jay Moore row host tomorrow. Then I have Miss K, T Streams, Nita the Diva, and Moochie again on Tuesday. So stay tuned. Come back and check us out. And we're almost to the tail end. Next week will be the finale. Then it's on to P Valley. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Follow me, people, on IG and Twitter. I'm thankful to everyone who sent me messages. Shout out to all you guys that sent me IG messages on all the leaks, um, all the stuff that was going on, and hit me on Twitter as well. That's where I'm able to respond to you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis versus the comments you post on the, the videos. Till that next sexy as hell video, you'll see her next week. You'll see me tomorrow. We're going to keep it fun. Peace. <laughs>